Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for Yoga's Magic Four Poses for Relaxation. My name is Ryan McGee. I'm the Communications Manager for Welcome MD, and we are very happy to have Leisha Reynolds with us today. Leisha is the founder of Bliss Yoga in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, and she is going to take us through just a very brief presentation on these poses and then do demonstration. And you guys can all follow along at home as well. A uh, little added bonus, Leisha is also going to teach us a little bit of Sanskrit today. So I'm especially excited about that. So I will turn it over to Leisha at the end. We will have time for questions from the audience. Uh, you'll see a little Q&A box on your screen. That's where you can send in your questions and we'll get to those at the end. So. Alicia, by all means, take it away. Great. Thank you, Ryan. And thank you all for joining me today. I'm so delighted to be able to share with you Yoga's Magic Four Poses. And I hope that that title intrigued you enough to join us today because yoga is in some ways a very magical practice in that it can do some amazing things for your body and your mind. And let's go ahead and jump right in. I want to acknowledge right up front that in these unusual times that we're living in, that we are feeling a lot of these emotions right now with the pandemic running rampant, with our quarantine condition. You might be feeling one or more of these things right now, maybe all of these things all at the same time, and they're real these emotions that you are experiencing are real. So what can yoga do to help you navigate through these choppy waters? There are three things that yoga can really help you with. And I believe Ryan is getting us to the next slide. That'd be great, thank you, Ryan. Yoga can help you really in multiple ways, but these are three key ways yoga can help you uh, manage your emotional state, your mental state, quieting the mind, guided awareness techniques or proven techniques to help quiet your mind. Using your breath, we're gonna do that today to calm your nervous system down. Right now, we can probably all use a little bit more of that. And then increasing your strength and your flexibility. Doing that can actually reduce your levels of stress. So we will have a chance today, a little bit later to experience all of these various aspects of the yoga practices. Quieting the mind is really key and experts tell us you have to quiet your mind in order to relax. I love this graphic because it shows a very busy mind on the right. Lots of thoughts. I'm thinking back to the slide with all of those various emotions that you might be feeling right about now. And the idea of a practice to quiet your mind is so that you can let those thoughts go. It doesn't mean they are not important or they can't help support you, but things like yoga and meditation can actually help strengthen your mind. When you can quiet your mind, it can be stronger. You can even think more clearly. Breathing. Just breathe. How many times has someone in your life told you to just breathe when you're feeling stressed? Well, that's easy to say and not always easy to practice. Here's your first Sanskrit lesson. The word at the top there is a pranayama, pranayama, and it means conscious awareness of breath. There are many benefits of doing a breathing practice like a pranayama practice. And you can see here the list, and there are even more bullets, but I, I just listed a few, and they include things like increased blood flow to your brain, which of course we can imagine helps us think more clearly. Your heart can work more efficiently and even your emotions can be sort of settled down. You can feel more emotionally well. I love this quote. It's a Sanskrit proverb, for breath is life. And if you breathe well, you will live long on earth. One of my favorite quotes, and I really do believe in this, Truly, and again, we'll get a chance to practice a little bit of uh, breathing practice today during our practice session. You might be wondering what some of the researchers out there, out there say about yoga. And I'll tell you, there's lots of research if you go out 
to the World Wide Web and just Google yoga and meditation, you'll find lots of information. And a couple of things here I found intriguing, mindfulness-based stress reduction programs. When you combine them with yoga, can reduce your stress, uplift your mood, and even boost your immune system. That's very powerful. Doing physical poses can, again, make you stronger and can even improve things like your digestive system. And finally, physical therapy is a strategy that works really well for many people. And in some studies, they say that yoga can actually help you decrease your low back pain. And I imagine that some of you on uh, today's webinar might be experiencing some low back pain. So yoga has been studied and it seems that it's helpful. So again, maybe that's a benefit that you'll experience today. So what are we gonna do today? You see here on the presentation, that we listed out just very simply what we're going to experience, a breathing practice. We're going to do yoga's magic four poses. And at the very end, we'll have a chance to experience a guided awareness that is going to hopefully uh, support you in feeling more relaxed and more settled in your own self. So are you ready to experience some bliss? Okay, great. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, with class today. And uh, uh, something I want to mention before we start, if any of you who are at home watching are taking immunosuppressants, perhaps you had an organ transplant, this practice of yoga, this style of yoga is not safe for you because it will open up your immune system. So I would encourage you to please watch follow along. Um, you will still, of course, uh, receive some benefits just by watching, but I want to um, just let you know that little bit of information. So if you are taking immunosuppressants, simply enjoy the benefits of watching today's session. Okay, you guys ready to get started? Great. All right, a couple of things that I have set up here in my studio. Uh, I have a chair You'll note there's some yoga blocks in the back as well. And I've got a blanket here on the floor. You may need the blanket for under your feet. You'll see in just a moment what, uh, how that's gonna help benefit you. If you need it, you might, not all of you will need that support. The other thing I wanna mention to you is that we're going to incorporate the breathing practice into our first pose. So, you might say it's like a twofer. Some of you might remember being a kid at the beach holding up a conch shell and listening to that ocean sound. The breathing practice kind of sounds like that. And I'm going to guide you through with my words on how to actually produce that sound. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start in the chair. Now I'll also say that you can use your couch, you can use an ottoman, you can use something where you can lean back into your seat and you have some support behind your back. So when we're at home quarantine, we use what we've got available. So go ahead and grab whatever you have. Again, blocks if you've got them. I think we also advise you to use soup cans if you don't have blocks at your home or something you can rest your hands on. Even a stack of books will work. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we are going to settle you into your seat uh, with your back comfortably resting up against the back of your seat. And you can just simply rest easily here for a moment. You can close your eyes for just a few breaths. And just bringing your awareness to your whole body from your toes up through your feet, ankles, lower legs, knees and thighs, your hips and hip joints, becoming aware of your torso, front and back, your arms, hands and wrists, fingers and thumbs, noticing your shoulders, neck, face and hands. 
and another breath in and another breath out. All right. Let's move into magic pose, magic four pose number one. There's, here's another Sanskrit lesson. Uh, the magic four pose number one is called Prasarita Padottanasana. That is a mouthful. It simply means slow motion dive. Prasarita Padottanasana, slow motion dive. So you'll note I have this blanket on the floor. The reason for that is because as I sit in my seat, I'm looking for my thighs to be parallel to the floor. That's really ideal to get the most out of the pose. You could also add books under your feet as long as your knees are level. If you're super tall, I happen to not be super tall. And if your knees are sloping upward like this, you can add a cushion under your seat. So whatever gives you the most support and keeps your thighs parallel. Go ahead and add that. Sitting back in your seat, bring your knees out wide. Walk your heels in until they're under your knees. Turn your toes inward. You'll note that my knees went inward just a little bit. If you notice that yours caved inward, you can walk your ankles in just a little closer together. Now you can see that my knees are pointing straight ahead, not caving in. Some of you may be able to keep a wider stance. It's generally about hip width. Scoop your buttocks back in your seat. Bring your elbows to the tops of your thighs. Look down at your ankles. Walk your feet into the correct position so that your shin bones are straight up and down. So if you look down, you'll see a straight up and down shin bone from side to side. And your knee is over your ankle. Your toes continue to be turned inward. And when you have that foot alignment, tuck your chin in towards your chest. Your hands can hang loosely in front. So if they're clasped, you can let those just rest loosely in front of you. Letting your belly soften all the way through to you. Continuing with easy breathing. This pose is to untangle the tightness around your tailbone. All these muscles that stretch from your sit bones to your tailbone can be super tight. This pose can help untangle some of those tight muscles. Continuing to let your head hang forward. Just let it naturally hang. To get some extra length through the back of your neck, you can tuck your chin in towards your chest. I'm going to talk you through the Ujjayi Pranayama breathing practice. Take in a nice easy breath, continuing to allow your head to hang forward. Your mouth will stay closed in this practice. And then let that breath out again. You can gently narrow your throat passageway using just a few inner throat muscles, listening to the sound, that ocean sound of your breath as it moves in and out. Let it be easy. Smooth out the flow of your breath. So your sound becomes smooth and steady. Continue listening to this ujjayi sound and allow it to fill your ears. And if for any reason you're efforting or straining, simply return to an easy breath. Your body recognizes this sound of your own breath as the most healing sound there is. And returning to a normal, easy breath, allowing your throat muscles to soften. 
Nebraska find its own easy pace. To come out of Pasarita Padotanasana, keep your head down, bring your palms to the tops of your thighs, and use your arms to tip your torso up. Your neck and head come up last. And just pause here for a moment to notice the effects of the pose. Maybe some of you feel more clarity, more focus. Perhaps your spine is lengthening upward or maybe even down into your seat. So that's magic for pose number one. Let's move into magic for pose number two, which is called Janu Shurshasana. Janu Shurshasana, which means crook leg pose. It very aptly describes what we're going to do. Before you move in, I'm going to demonstrate this one for you. You're going to bring your knees and your feet together. You're going to walk your big toes forward about a big toe. So you have this nice gentle slope in your shins. You'll bring your ankle bone, the top of your knee, right in the center. You're going to lift your knee, gently slide the ankle bone back. Your buttocks are still back in your seat. Your shoulders are gently back. And you'll tip your chin forward. That's it. That's simple. Coming out will support that knee, protects the knee joints, slide the ankle off, bring the feet back together, then your head comes down. Okay, it's your turn to move in to crook leg pose on the right. So again, scoot yourself back in your seat all the way if you maybe slid forward just a little bit. Bring your right ankle bone to the very top center of your left knee. Some of you might be feeling a little pain there. You can slide in a sock or part of your shirt or even a little a blanket if you need it. Support this right knee with your palm. Lift it about an inch toward the ceiling. You can hold on to that right ankle and you can slide the ankle bone up your thigh bone, but don't force it past the point of comfort. It stays right in the center of your thigh bone. Don't allow it to fall off the side or into the center. Keep it right in the middle. I am aware that some of you might need some extra support here under your knee. Might be, uh, it might be a little painful. Pull in a chair if you can or some other propping and you can pull in a cushion from your couch or a big blanket and roll it up and you can support your thigh with that. And I'll show you because I happen to have a chair nearby, what that looks like. If I want to use a chair for support, I simply pull that in at a 45 degree angle and I can prop under my leg and settle into the pose. Let your torso come back, your shoulders back, tipping your chin forward. Allowing your belly to soften all the way through to your back. The chair is fully supporting you in this pose, which releases tensions through your sacrum. Sacrum bone is right above the tailbone. And it holds a lot of tension, lots of muscles around that area of the body. There is also this fascinating skull and sacrum connection. So this pose can help relieve sinus congestion. This time of year, folks experiencing allergies. So this pose is very effective at relieving some of those symptoms. Let your shoulders stay gently back. Your chin can tuck in toward your chest even a little more. Some of you might notice that your left knee wants to wander out to the side. If that happens, just use some inner thigh muscles of your left leg to bring that back to center so that knee is facing forward. Continue with easy breathing and allow your belly to continue to soften even that right leg can soften a little bit more. Your hands are gently down by your sides. 
to come out of this pose, support that right knee, gently lift, slide your ankle bone off of your thigh bone, bring your feet back together, and head comes up last. And I'll ask you to just notice if you feel different on one side. Perhaps you feel longer or softer on one side. Maybe your sinuses have opened up on one side. Lots of benefits for this pose. Let's move to your left side. So you can bring your feet back together in front of you. If your feet walked backward, again, that big toe print walk goes forward. Scooting back in your seat, bending this time your left knee. Ankle bone is right in the center of your knee, right in the very center top of your knee. Support that left knee, gently lift, slide the ankle bone back. Don't force it, let it go where it naturally wants to go. The shoulders come gently back. You can tuck your chin in towards your chest and just settle into Janu Shurshasana on this left side, allowing your belly to soften. Even that right leg can begin to soften, maybe even a little bit more on this side. Breathing is easy. And tuck your chin in towards your chest, even a little bit more to get some additional length through the back of your neck. And we're ready to come out of the pose. So you can keep your head down, support that left knee. That's important to protect your knee joint. Lift it toward the ceiling, slide that ankle bone off your thigh bone, bring your head up. And just bring your awareness to the continuing changes that you are feeling in your body and maybe even in your mind. Okay, so we're halfway through our magic four uh, poses, and we're gonna move to pose number three now, which is lunge, also called Anjaniyasana. Anjaniyasana, another Sanskrit lesson. So I am going to have you grab your blocks at this point, or soup cans, if you're using soup cans. You can also move your chair out of the way, if it's movable, if it's a couch, I know you probably can't move it, but I'm going to have you grab whatever propping you need for lunch. I'm going to demo this pose because it has several moving parts and I just want to ensure that you uh, can see fully what we're going to do in this pose. So you're going to be on your hands and knees. The knees aren't wide, they're not really tight together, they're just about hip width apart. I'm on the tall end of my block. I'm going to keep my hips back. I'm going to bring my foot through and ahead of my blocks and hands. This arm is going to be a kickstand. This is my left arm. I'm going to stay straight. I'm going to reach into my navel with my index finger down a thumbprint to the right. Press in deep, very deep. Bring your belly to the side. Palm comes to your low ribs. My whole belly is now on my thigh. Some of you can lower your blocks. Head is down. Coming into lunge, bringing that right knee forward. Only as far as you go. Pressing your hands in to come out, okay? So I'm gonna give you a moment to get yourself set up. Grab your blocks, turn your hands and knees. And again, not starting with your knees too wide, fairly close together. Your arms also perpendicular to each other. 
so that your wrists are on your shoulders. Hips are back, you're from your hands and knees. Bring that left foot ahead of your hands and blocks. Left foot ahead of your hands and blocks. I'm doing mirror image, so I'm saying left foot for you. So just listen to my words. Left foot is ahead of your hands and blocks. Keep your hips back. Your right arm is going to be strong and straight. You're going to reach in with your left index finger to your navel. So put your index finger in your belly button. Bring it down about a thumbprint. Bring it south about a thumbprint. Then bring your index finger over to the left about a thumbprint. Then press in right there very deeply, like toward your spine, like you're trying to actually grab your tongue. Once you have that belly in your hand, you can bring it over to the side. You can see here, yep, I'm bringing it over to the side, so it's over my thigh. Then I'm going to bring my palm up to this flat part of my low ribs, and I'm going to lay that whole belly on my thigh. If your belly has slid off, try it again. Hips are still back. So that belly up move again as your index finger goes in your navel, down a thumbprint to the left, a thumbprint. Press in deeply, bring your belly on or over your thigh. Then bring your palm out and up to your lowest ribs and bring those forward, lifting that whole belly up on your thigh. Your head is now down. Your hands, for some of you, can come down to lower blocks. Moving into lunge, bringing that left knee forward. This is where we'll do a little finessing. Look down at your ankle, is it under your knee? Once you've moved all the way in, as far as you can comfortably go, and it may not be as far as you think it can be. That's okay, you'll get a lot out of the pose regardless of where you stop. Look down and make sure your ankle's under your knee. That protects your knee point. You may have to walk your foot back or forward. And then look down at your hands. As far as you can tell, are your wrists under your shoulders? That's what you want to check. Looking down, you're basically like two pillars. Your arms are like two pillars. Let your head hang forward. In this pose, you're getting some release from your neck down your spine, but also from your tailbone and sacrum and waist upward. So you're kind of getting this decompression from two angles, from your neck down and from your tailbone up. This pose has that ability to do that. It's, again, lunge, and it is for your waist to release tensions in and around your waist area. Keep your head hanging forward. You can tuck your chin in a little bit more. Head is natural, provides natural traction in this pose. Let your breathing continue to be easy and at your own pace. This pose is known to relieve fear. So, wow, right about now, this might be a go-to pose for you. To come out, press in with your hands to your blocks or books and bring that left foot out. And come back to where you began. Come back to where you started. So again, from your hands and knees, Pause here for a moment. This time you're going to bring your right foot slightly ahead of your hands and blocks. You're going to use that left arm as a kickstand, if you will. So keep it nice and straight and strong. Bring your index finger into your navel. And that elbow, that right elbow, doesn't have to stick way up in the air. It can, it can be nice and relaxed and down toward the floor. Go down the thumbprint and to the right. Press in really deeply. Bring your belly over to the right. Then lift those low ribs. Don't, don't skip on this part. Up towards your knee. The reason we do the belly up movement is to keep your spine straight in the back. So we line the spine up, and when we do that alignment, we can get the most out of the pose. Head is down. Hands are down. 
You can come into the lunge, bringing that right knee forward. Once you're in as far as you can go, adjust your foot so that ankle's under your knee and adjust your hands so that your arms are those pillars. They're parallel. They're strong. You can spread your fingers wide. Let your hips soften and settle in the center. While you continue to allow your head to hang heavy. Maybe opening up some space in your upper back. Maybe you're noticing some changes down through your low back. I like to call this the fear relieving pose. Anjaniyasana lunge. Press into your blocks with your hands. That will slide your hips back where you can bring that right foot out. And we're now done with magic pose. Magic four pose number three. We're moving into our final pose and then we'll finish up with a guided awareness. So for this pose, this last pose, number four, you're going to need to be on the floor on your back. I'm gonna pull in a little head cushion for me. And it's not very thick. You can see here, it's just a few layers, about eight layers, because what I'm aiming for here is that my forehead and chin are just about level, which means my neck isn't um, at an extreme angle backwards or forward. So that's what you're looking for. You might have a pillow that would work or something else that would be effective. I'm gonna demo this pose so you can simply sit comfortably and watch this next pose. It's called Jatara Parivrittanasana. Maybe the biggest mouthful yet. <laughs> Rotated stomach pose, Jatara Parivrittanasana. So you're gonna lay on your back. Your head propping, if you need it, is only under your head, not under your neck, not under your shoulders. You're gonna hold these knees. Some of you are like, I need to be further away because my knees are separating. Just push them away. You can even hold your pant legs. And you're gonna roll over onto your side, holding onto your knees. Your wrist bone is naturally gonna meet up with that bottom knee. You're gonna bring your palm to the side of your waist. You're gonna allow your elbow to rest down and then your shoulder to rest down. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. That was just a quick demo. So I'm gonna talk you through both sides. So coming onto your back, we're gonna roll over onto your left side. So rolling over onto your left side, holding on your knees. Your wrist bone, your left wrist bone meets up with your left kneecap. Bring your right palm to the side of your waist. Let your elbow settle back. You're oh, basically opening up your chest in this pose. It's sort of spiraling toward the ceiling. You can also tuck your fingers in your waistband to support your shoulder. If your elbow reaches the floor, you can extend the arm out behind you. The elbow reaches the floor, that right elbow, you can open your arm out to the side. Or you can simply leave that palm on the side of your waist. This pose is a full spinal release from top to bottom. It's opening up your rib cage in particular. It's very effective at doing that. It is very effective also at improving your digestion and your breathing capacity as well. Let your whole body rest in this pose, on this side, let your shoulder settle back, your right shoulder. You're not holding anything here. You're simply allowing the floor to fully support you as your body settles into the support of this pose. And you get some release through that spine, maybe all the way up to your neck. 
coming out of the pose on this side, you can simply bring your head to the center one first, and then one at a time, your legs coming to center. Pausing for just a moment. Maybe you opened up on that side. You're noticing some things have shifted or changed with your low back, maybe your neck or shoulders. We're going to do the other side. So this time, you're going to roll your body and legs and torso to the right. Your kneecap meets up with the wrist bone. And that's right kneecap, right wrist bone. Bring your left palm to the side of your waist. Your fingers are going to lap over onto your belly. So the flat part of your palm is on the very side of your waist. Your elbow settles back. Shoulder can settle back. Your chest is spiraling toward the ceiling. And your head is gently turned to the right as you settle into Jatara Parivrittanasana on this right side. This pose is also very effective at calming your nervous system. It give you a really easy and peaceful feeling when you do the when you do this pose, known also as rotated stomach pose. See if you can allow that left shoulder to settle down. Maybe even a little more. Let your breathing be easy. And then coming out on this side, you can simply uh, stretch that left arm across your side, your left side, and rest on your right side. And then push yourself up with your hands and arms, your neck and head can relax. We are going to move into our guided awareness here for the very end of class. I'm going to show you how to rest yourself in Shavasana, which is yoga's relaxation pose. So it's a pose, but you're not actually having to work at it. Uh, you're going to grab your chair, your ottoman, your couch, whatever you have, and you're going to extend your legs over. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. Simply lay on your back and bring your knee creases to the edge of your chair or ottoman or couch and just get yourself adjusted so that those knee creases are right there. Your feet and legs are together. So your big toes and ball joints are touching, your knees are side by side. Ideally, your legs are not open. They are side by side. If they are separating, you can scoot a little further away from your chair or couch. So that is how you're going to settle in. The final piece is to bring your palms face up. Your arms about a handprint and a half away from your torso, or you can rest those on your belly. And then you allow your legs to be soft. I'm going to come out of the pose. You're going to stay in that pose. You can go ahead and get yourself set up for Shavasana. And then I'm going to talk you guys through a beautiful guided awareness so you can settle a little more deeply into uh, what yoga can provide for you. Take in a nice, long, easy in-breath and let it out long and easy. And another in-breath with a long, slow out-breath. Noticing how your body feels as you settle into Shavasana, yoga's relaxation pose. Become aware of your toes, all 10 toes, all at the same time. Notice your feet, both feet, both feet at the same time. Notice your toes and feet outside and inside. 
Extend your awareness through your ankles, into and through the length of both legs, including your lower legs, knees and thighs, and into and through both hips and hip joints, outside and inside. Being aware of both feet, legs and hips, outside and inside. Extend your awareness into the area between your hips and hip joints, across the base of your pelvis, into and through your belly, outside and inside. Become aware of your chest, your whole chest, including all the way up through the fronts of your shoulders and across your collarbones. Being aware of your whole chest, outside and inside. Extend your awareness around the sides of your torso and into your back. Becoming aware of your whole back including the backs of your shoulder blades, the space between your shoulder blades, the back of your ribs, the back of your waist, and through the whole lower portion of your back, including the backs of your hips and buttocks, and from the center of your waist down through your sacrum into your tailbone. Being aware of your whole back, your whole torso, front and back, outside and inside. Extend your awareness from your torso through your arms and into your hands. Notice your fingers and thumbs, thumbs and fingers, and through both hands. Become aware of your wrists and through your arms, the length of both arms, including your lower arms, elbows and upper arms, including your underarms and shoulders, hands, arms and shoulders, outside and inside. Extend your awareness from your torso through your shoulders and into your neck. Becoming aware of your neck outside and inside. Extend your awareness through your neck, face and head. Outside and inside. Now being aware of your whole body, including your feet and legs, your torso, the whole trunk of your body, your hands and arms, and from your torso through your shoulders, neck, face, and head, outside and inside, all at the same time. Being aware of your whole body, being aware of awareness itself. Follow awareness into its source, rest in that.
Notice your breathing. Take in a nice, long, easy in-breath and let it out long and easy. And another one if you'd like. To begin moving, wiggle your toes and feet. Wiggle and stretch your fingers and hands. Roll your neck and head from side to side. Stretch and move in any way you like. And when you're ready, you can roll over onto your side, either side. and rest there for a few breaths. I'll offer up a contemplation from Indian guru Bhagawan Nityananda. The heart is the hub of all sacred places. Go there and run. The heart is the hub of all sacred places. Go there and run. And when you're ready, you can slowly push yourself up using your hands and arms, bringing your neck and your head up last. And as is traditional in yoga practices, we'll finish up our class with a yoga mudra, seal in the benefits of your practice. You can simply sit back on your heels. If that isn't comfortable, you can place a cushion or a blanket between your heels and your buttocks to decrease the angle there, the severe angle on your knees. Or if that isn't comfortable, you can also simply sit cross-legged in a comfortable, easy position. Bring your hands to heart center, palms facing one another, fingers together. This is Anjali Mudra, sealing in the benefits of your practice. Turning your attention inward. Namaste. Thank you all for being here today. I think we do have a few minutes to take any questions, Ryan, Robin, that might have come in. Folks may be pretty blissed out right now if they followed along, so they may or may not have questions. But I'm happy to answer those as they come up. Yeah, and you can submit your questions for Leisha through the Q&A box that you see on your screen. Leisha, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today and guide us through these poses. Uh, as, as we're waiting for questions, can you just let us know, um, you know, how, what, what is a normal class for you uh, consist of? How long is it and how, how different is it from what we experienced here today? Good question. So the classes that I teach are normally 90 minutes and we always open with Shavasana. So we ended class in Shavasana today, but we always have bookends. So we open and close with it, which is really beautiful because you get a chance to have that guided awareness on both ends of the class. Um, and in between uh, those bookends, we would have maybe these magic four and a few other poses mixed in as well that might focus on other parts of your body and spine, your abdominals, for example, might be something we can work on your hamstrings. We have poses that engage your abdominals and hamstrings, but the idea is really to release the tension in your spine. And the poses you learn here today will do that. So in the 90 minutes, we can effectively release those spinal tension. The other thing we do incorporate, Ryan, is a more uh, lengthy breathing practice the ujjayi pranayama practice is usually about five minutes and we do that at the very beginning of our class before we start poses uh, what is it about the, the the poses that you showed us here today that are that make them specifically for relaxing what is it about the the physiology or the the mental aspect of it that makes them specific to relaxation i'm glad you asked because there are poses that can tighten your spine and today's magic four really get in there starting at the tailbone and work their way up. So tailbone, sacrum, waist, rib cage. When we decompress the spine starting at the base of the spine at the tailbone, 
we can experience the most opportunity for reliable release. A lot of us walk around with really tight spines. There's no space and it's squeezing off blood flow in the body and it's causing physical ailments and other mental conditions even. So when we can decompress the spine, we can get some more space in there. The muscles are also holding that spine tight. So these magic four poses are really effective at releasing that tightness through the spine. Starting again from the tailbone up, which is where all the tightness begins, by the way. The tailbone is the culprit. When we get scared, the first thing that happens or anxious, the tailbone tucks under, not unlike an animal. Uh, first question here, um, when doing these poses, can someone put something under their knees? It seems like these poses specifically were kind of painful to, to be on their knees. Is it, okay to, is it okay to have a pad under your knees while doing these? Yes, in class we do offer um, support for folks that might need it. One of the things that students find effective is a gardening pad with a hole in the end, putting your knee through the hole. So it's not lifting you up and out of alignment, but it's supporting your knee. So that's an idea for someone that wants to try it at home. The other thing you could do for lunge, you could open up your blanket and have your whole body, knees, hands, arms resting on the whole blanket. So you'd be elevating your entire body. That's another strategy that you could use for supporting your knees if they're tender. Is it recommended to do these four poses in order? Like the order you presented them, is that the order that they really need to be practiced if you're going to do them as a group? It's most effective if you want to experience that spinal decompression and that, that feeling of bliss and relaxation is start at the tailbone and work your way up. Um, I call lunge, however, number three, a fix all for when you're feeling anxious or afraid. I mentioned that during the class. Mm -hmm. Lunge is done, I do it a couple times a day in the middle of my workday. But if you want to do a semi private or private home practice, I would say start with the first pose, which we'll share, by the way, after this webinar. We'll share the poses. Start there and work your way up. You may have just answered uh, the next question. You know, say we're, we, we had a, a, conference, a, a conference call end early, got a couple minutes between conference calls, just want a real quick, real quick yoga pose for relaxation when you've got only a couple minutes. Which one of these do you recommend if you've just got a couple minutes real quick? Um, the, the last pose we did, the rotated stomach pose, mm -hmm. is very soothing for your nervous system. It's very calming. If you've got to jump on a call, if you've got a minute. See if you can get yourself on the floor, prop your head, and do that rotated stomach pose for a minute on each side. And you'll notice some benefit from that. You'll definitely feel calmer and more, probably more relaxed just after doing a minute on each side. Another question, this person, they say they take uh, medicine for problems with their heart. Is yoga good for that? And are there poses that you recommend for that? Um, the all of yoga's poses really, if they're focused on spinal decompression, can really help support your um, immune system and your cardiovascular function. In, in yoga, there also are poses that we don't have folks with heart conditions do. Um, you may have seen in some of the yoga pictures, inversions where people are on their heads and doing some other things with their legs over their heads. Those are poses we don't normally recommend for someone with cardiovascular issues. But what I share with you today is safe for people to do that have heart conditions or even other conditions. And unless, again, you're taking those immunosuppressants for a condition, um, you, may, you will not want to practice the poses we did today. It's a good question because it affects a bunch of people I know. Is yoga good for acid reflux? Yes. Oh, yes. It's, so acid reflux in the gut, right? I mean, it goes through your whole system really, but it starts in the stomach and it's coming up. So there's some tightness around your, your belly and you're inside your gut and your stomach. There's something tightening up your stomach and it's probably your spinal tension. And if you can let go of some spinal tension, your system can work more efficiently, which means acid reflux can probably be relieved. I won't say cured, but it can probably, you can probably experience some relief once you let those internal organs open up and have more space in your body. And that last pose we did, 
is very effective at doing that. Okay, Alicia, well, we're coming up on an hour, so can you just let people know how they can get a hold of you, how they can learn more about your practice, and how they can sign up for a future class? Of course, yes. I would be delighted to have any of you join me for class. And by the way, right now, we are, of course, doing class online. We are not meeting in person. We are observing social distancing protocols and expect to be doing that for some time. You'll see here on this slide that my email's listed. Please feel free to email me with questions after. There's my number. You can feel free to call or text. And then there's my webpage. So if you go to the webpage, there is a contact me section. And if you want to sign up for a class, you can certainly do it that way as well. My website also has more information about the practice. Um, but I'm happy to field calls or texts or emails if you'd like to send those to me. Right now, I'm going to teach Sunday at 4. That's my next class coming up, but I also teach two classes on Mondays as well. All right. Well, thank you again so much for joining us and sharing this information with us today. Uh, we will send an email out to everyone who participated with a link to the replay of this class, as well as I believe you have instructions and detailed uh, a, de a detailed document with photos on the poses that kind of goes through it in detail, correct? That is right. We're going to send that out, I think, Ryan, after this mm -hmm. webinar. Correct. All right, so thank you all again. Uh, if this was your first time, um, first exposure to Welcome MD, we are a concierge medical practice in Richmond and in Charlotte. We are seeing patients. We are taking on new patients. If you want to learn more, please visit us at welcomemd.com. It's W-E-L-L-C-O-M-E-M-D.com. And thank you again for joining us.